Uh, it's Tuesday the 6th of November 2018. Uh, today I'm at Shipston on Stara. My name's David Jenkins and today I'm talking to Peter Gibbs. Oh, hello Peter and thank you for your time. Um, I wanted to um, talk more about your Derbyshire cricket and um, you came into county cricket um, and the one day competition, the Gillette Cup, um, was already with us at that point and because you were part of the team that made its way all the way through to uh, a final day at Lords. Can you tell us something about that journey? Well, of course, we'd had, uh, had a great semi-final victory against Sussex, a very sort of um, significant game in the sense that we, we arrived, that the wicket had been uh, rain-affected, we had an enormous crowd for Chesterfield. The bank there was absolutely jam-packed. So it was a marvellous atmosphere. And uh, we started off and we, we, we accumulated, you know, a very modest total. And, uh, and the wicket steadily dried out. And uh, we, we put Sussex to the sword, our fast bowlers, who were marvellous. And, and we bowled them out for, for, for a very meagre total. And we got to Lords, which was, a, you know, I suppose in many ways we were we were we, we took stage fright to an extent. Uh, we were there, the headquarters of cricket, the ground absolutely uh, dressed up for the occasion, and um, you know, you, you you got this terrific buzz, and you were part of it, but not part of it mm. in many ways. It was an out of body experience when you arrived there. You see the catering vans. Everybody is busy doing their bit. You're actually playing, but somehow you're, 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 you're an afterthought. You eventually get to the dressing room and, uh, and try and absorb. And people sort of say that you've got to have experienced it on a number of occasions before you become properly attuned to playing such a, such a game. And it was certainly true of us. I mean, we hadn't had that experience before, and to some extent it, 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 it did affect us. We'd had a meeting um, in, the, in, in the dressing room, having had a look at the wicket. We were a strong side in the sense that we had a tremendous uh, uh, seam bowling attack. And of course, Lords, you know, it was thought that, um, uh, you know, it, it sort of played tricks early in the morning. But even so, we, we, we had agreed that if we won the toss, we'd bat. And, uh, and and then Derry Pork and of course won the toss and put the other side in. <laughs> so so that was a sort of omen in many ways. Uh, and we went out. Now the, the the thing that sometimes we we, we meet as a as a as a you know the surviving members of that team. And one of the things that we remember is that about ten minutes before we we went out to play, uh, Fred Rumsey said uh, looked at his boots and said, has anybody got any spikes? And he, w he, was, he was still, we were still working, working with knocking spikes, of which nobody had got any. And within a fairly short time after the start of play, uh, Fred went over on his, on his backside. And we thought, well, you know, that's another omen. Prior to that, when we were in the dressing room, feeling rather nervous before going out, we heard these steps coming along the, the corridor of Lords, which is a which is a gargantuan building inside. It's like obviously, as you know, it's like a Victorian railway station. And um, we heard these steps coming, and they were Brian Close's. And he rapped on the door, and he opened the door, and he said, "Derek, are we ready to go out to to, to toss?" And I looked at Derek, and he sort of he almost sort of you know sort of it was like a jelly, and 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 somehow Brian. He'd be, he'd, he was known as a great captain and you could see how he would manipulate the day even from that moment. And his, his, his presence was great and his co co command on the field was also wonderful. And he was used to it. He, he played in test matches, he'd been in controversial circumstances. Uh, he'd been through it. And Derek of course hadn't. Derek was a very, very nice man, very capable, very wonderful cricketer. But he was coming as, a, as, as, as a inexperienced as the rest of us in many ways. So that, those were the things that I remember about that, that, that morning in particular.
And the other thing that I remember is that one of the Yorkshire boycott was out, he was injured, which was great, but the, 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 the opening, I think it was Woodford, Woodful, Woodford, I think. Anyway, he skied one. I was, I was at mid-off, and Alan Ward was down on the fine leg boundary, and the ball went up, soared up, and came down, and Alan dropped the catch. I wasn't that surprised that he dropped the catch, but I was surprised because the effect of the audience behind, the spectators, they all seemed to move forward in a, in a, in a communal gasp. Uh, it was rather like seeing a, 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 a Mexican wave, but the whole state, you know, the whole part of that stadium came forward at that moment. Ah! And my legs went really and thought, "Crikey, you know, we're in a we're in a stadium, we're in an amphitheatre here that we haven't been, you know, experienced before." Um, so anyway, the game went on its on its course. We went out to. We went out to bat. The total wasn't that demanding, um, but as some people have remarked, Yorkshire bowled very cannily. Uh, Nicholson was the bowler that we really felt that we needed to see off. Uh, Chris Old was very nervous. Uh, he was running up to bowl quite a you know his usual run up, but there was no pace in it at all in, in his bowling. And in one way or another, uh, we, we sort of nudged and pushed through to what I, I didn't really re remember as being tea because they'd altered the Gillette Cup, altered the tea time, so that whereas I was sort of um, programmed to expect tea at a certain time, it wasn't that. And I played a diabolical shot uh, just prior to, t well, what emerged to be the, you know, I played the shot, I got bowled. And the umpires took the bales off at their end and said, that'll be tea, gentlemen. And I thought, that's not a good eye, good thing. But it was part of that day. Um, and uh, whatever happened, <coughs> David Smith, who was my opening partner, <coughs> he found that uh, Derek had, had promoted himself in the order to go out after tea. And just as they were going out onto the field, uh, Derek said uh, to, da to David, um, "Not too many, sh not too many short singles. I think I've gone in the hammy." <laughs> so again, and uh, Alan Ward got promoted up the order for no apparent reason, and you know we, we sort of ended up in, in disarray really. So it was a disappointing day in that respect. It was very, you know, it was very memorable for us and very memorable for me. Um, but uh, it, was, it was just that big occasion when a little bit of stage fright took over and uh, we weren't able to play to our potential, which was essentially, we were better than that Yorkshire mm. side, particularly with Boycott Hound. Mm. And as you say, the, the, the experience that Yorkshire had had in that <coughs> form of cricket and being a, such a top side through the 60s as yes. well would have helped. Uh, well, thank you very much for that. Um, d d just moving on a bit with uh, the Derbyshire cricket, uh, you would have played at a time when Derbyshire used quite a number of outgrounds, and you must have some memories of that cricket. Yes, I suppose selfishly, a player sort of thinks where whether he's had a favourite ground that that is sort of uh, where he's been successful. Um, I'm not sure that that any of the outgrounds have got that. Um, significance for me. Uh, I do remember them well. I mean, I, one of the things that I do remember, it's got nothing in many ways to do with cricket, was playing at Buxton because I used to travel up, uh, as others did, in their cars through some wonderful peak district scenery. And if it was a sunny day, travelling to work and travelling to work and play cricket, which was probably what a lot of people would have loved to have done. I felt very, very privileged that that is where I was going on that day. Um, so in that respect, I, I, I did enjoy Buxton. Although, of course, we had some, we had some sort of um, quite sporting wickets up there. Um, I remember one one game against Lancashire where they had Peter Lever and uh, Ken Shuttleworth opening the bowling. 
and uh, they were rapid. You know, I mean, people sometimes say, "Who was the fastest bowler you've ever faced?" And the, and the answer is that on any particular morning or day, it could be any one of half a dozen, because it depends upon whether they're in rhythm, whether the whether the wicket's hard, whether the sun's out. But on that particular day, Buxton, you know, I think there are three Derbyshire players in um, in the Cottage Hospital, uh, at the X-ray department. <laughs> so uh, I remember it for that reason. Ilkeston, I remember because we normally played Nottinghamshire there. Uh, it was very much a recreation ground, which is what we called it. Uh, and the, 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 the ground, we, we always sort of seemed to give that game away to, to, to Nottinghamshire because they always seemed to spin us out there. Uh, Bob White, I think, uh, got, you know, it was one of his favourite grounds. It wasn't ours. Gary, of course, used to uh, perform well there. The one game that I do remember um, positively was the Sunday League match, of course, when we, uh, we, 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 when David Smith let loose. And it was basically because I'd been up the wicket and said something rude to him mm. as to the fact that he was he was stuck in the mud and we weren't going to get what was a reasonable total on a Sunday match. And he, he got so cross that he, that he smashed Derek Shackleton over into the car parks. At, uh, and, uh, you know, we won the game very easily because purely he'd lost his temper. Mm. And at the end of the, of the game, Derek Shackleton, who was, of course, so wonderful a bowler, so, you know, mean in terms of his uh, run rate, he couldn't get runs off him, he came with his boots and threw his boots into our dressing room. He said <laughs> he'd never before been savaged by David Smith and he was giving up the game. <laughs> so, the Ilkeston. Um, Burton, I remember because it was one of the, the days when you've already had an interview with Harold and it was when Buller was umpiring and uh, Harold was, a, was, was quite stubborn and uh, in his response to, to, to Sid Buller's standing. At, at square leg, and, uh, and Derek said, "I think we'd better put you on the other, the other end, fella. You know, so we don't have any conflict." And Harold refused this. It was a very, very dark, dank morning, Burton, and um, I remember that Sid Buller watched Harold bowl two or three balls, and then said to the captain, "I'm going over now to stand on the other side of the wicket," which we all knew was a in preparation to making a, a decision. Anyway, he went over there and then he came back to his square leg position. And I remember that when Harold got to the end of his end of his run up prior to coming into bowl, Sid got an asthma inhaler out of his pocket and went <laughs> which meant that he was clearing his throat. But I remember that the, the ground was so silent and so dark that I remember it to this day and of course Harold must have known because of the sound of this inhaler what was coming and, and so it proved. So that was Burton, very dark, very dark to, to bat in. He had some terraced houses at the, back. at the back. I remember facing Fred Rumsey having great difficulty in picking the ball out of this, uh, this, these rows of houses. Um, wickets again, historically very, un, very uneven, very difficult. So, so that was another one. Uh, what, what other game? What other signs? Um, grounds? I think that's it, isn't it? Uh, I've seen one. Yeah, you didn't play at Hena. I didn't play at no. Hena, other than when I played in league league cricket. Um, so that was okay. Um, just wanted to ask uh, briefly, uh, Peter, about your involvement with past players, because you, you've had a role in uh, in helping to bring those together over a period of time. Yes, I, I, I sort of, um, it was the, one of those volunteer moments when everybody else steps back and you find yourself in the position of secretary, which I must have done, it must be 20, 25 years ago. And uh, we, we, it was part and parcel of the fact that we, 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 as a team in the 60s, early 70s, we kept very much in contact with one another and wanted to maintain a tradition of having a lunch uh, and so a, an informal association was formed, facilitated by the club in terms of the facility and a lunch. 
and we've 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 done that every year. Um, and you know, we, we those people from the, those days did they did enjoy it. Of course, teams stayed very much as teams in those days. You know, the, the, you'd have the same team most years with one or two additions, one or two people retiring. Whereas, whereas subsequently, they've become very dispersed and um, and not, are not quite as uh, identifiably Derbyshire or Warwickshire or Worcestershire mm. as as it used to be the case. Mm. But uh, yes, that's something we would like to maintain mm. and uh, and have enjoyed. Okay. Um, and then finally, just to, to move away from cricket, you, you, you've um, you've had success as, as, a, as a writer and uh, with a variety of TV programmes. C can you tell me how how all that came about? Well, I, I've been writing a sort of review material um, from my university days, and um, and also um, when we had Sunday off. I'd, and, we, and we were away from home, say for example, I, I would probably jot some stuff down then. I mean, a, a lot of people thought I was, uh, you know, sort of thinking of plots whilst I should have been fielding. <laughs> you know, they were <laughs> daydreaming, as they would say. Um, so the, the, the start of it was, was, was fairly early on. Um, what happened is that finally I got I, I'd, I'd entered a competition and, and, and won the radio competition for a radio play and from then on uh, you know there, there, were, there was a continuous uh, production from me of, of stories and scripts and so on. I mean one of the things that connects it with cricket is the sense that when I left cricket some people said well did you miss it and I think that rather in the same way as other people say I didn't miss the cricket as much as the team and as much as, a, as, as being in, in, involved, living with uh, and enjoying the company of, of players. And um, in, in some ways, um, being writing on my own, of course, was the very antithesis of this. Um, such that I, I got drawn into, into writing for a long, a long running series called Heartbeat, of course, which is uh, an eight o'clock, or, or was, an eight o'clock Sunday show, family audience, very gentle, didn't take itself too seriously, but the essential thing was that I became part of a team mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. because I stayed with the, with, with the show uh, for such a long time that uh, I went up to casting and I went up to read-throughs and I became thoroughly part of that particular team. So that was, that was an interesting uh, uh, sort of, I was revisiting something that I'd enjoyed in the past uh, and, and made that, uh, you know, uh, an advantage in something that's a, quite a solitary profession really. Well Peter, it, it's been a, a joy to talk to you today, so thank you very much indeed for that. Thank you, thank you.